when you're trying to diversify is this. <coughs> a deliberate attempt to divide people who are acting on climate, on the one hand, from people who aren't, on the other. And this discredit and dismiss people on both sides of that divide. One side, middle class loonies. The other side, materialist fools. <coughs> That's the way they have us set up. What can we do about it? The first thing that we've done, have been doing, is to challenge the lie. Because the truth is that there's no contradiction between saving the climate and saving ourselves economically. In fact, climate change means poverty. And the poorer you are already, the harder you're being hit <coughs> by the change in the climate that's already taking place. And in fact, all the environmental issues that they're saying are just middle class concerns hit poorer people harder. Food prices, floods, storms, water pollution, nuclear radiation, or just the theft of resources that we need for our hospitals and schools and our housing. In specific, on energy prices, which is the first concern of fuel poverty action, the truth is that fossil fuels are getting harder to extract and more and more expensive, and fracking is not going to change that. And even without the investment that it should be getting, the cost of renewable energy is going down, it's plummeting, while the cost of fossil fuels are going up. Now, I've got no time to show how the government is subsidizing fossil fuels and waging wars for fossil fuels, which don't come cheap, either in life or money, and at the same time economically sabotaging renewable energy. But the proof is there if you want to look for it. The point here is that these truths are really hard to get through to people. Because remember, they've got the media in their hands, and we've been painted as do-gooders or outside agitators. Take your pick. And the question is, how do you get through that? And this is a practical conference, so I want to give some examples. First, we have to start with and be useful to the battles that people are already engaged in the things that people already identify as their own issues. At the end of climate camp, a load of people went off to form UK Uncut. I don't know if people here know that. They felt that they couldn't get through on the climate issue anymore, and it would be more effective to focus on the cuts that everybody knew about and was angry about. But a few of us started fuel poverty action, because in tackling the energy companies and energy policies, we could deal with poverty and climate change at the same time. And at first, it felt a bit like maybe we were using people, like we had some ulterior motive when we talked about fuel poverty. But the more we plunged into the grotesque way that people are actually being ripped off by the energy companies, the fact that over 8,000 people a year are dying in this country, this rich country, dying of fuel poverty every year, the way they break into people's homes to impose prepayment meters. And the more at the same time we saw the results of those policies in climate change happening here and now, with the floods, for example, and food prices and the storms, as well as the rising price of fossil fuels, the more we actually saw the truth of what was happening in concrete terms, the more we could see that we, if we campaign on that and help individuals deal with their energy companies, with British Gas or NPower or the rest of the more we did that, the more we saw that it really was the same fight. We weren't a con, and we shouldn't be embarrassed about talking to people about climate change and making clear that climate change is an equal part of what's happening. So we had to, first of all, listen. Listen to what grassroots people had to say, women and men, people of color, people with disabilities, people from other countries, people on welfare. Listen, and then secondly, we had to make sure that we found ways to amplify those voices, to make sure that in what we did, those voices were actually getting heard. And Claire's going to talk about that a lot more in the workshop at 6 o'clock this <coughs> evening, and I hope she'll go to it. But to just give you a brief idea, because we need to be concrete, we've been going out to groups of pensioners, asylum seekers, single mothers, people with disabilities, going out to speak and holding our own coffee morning, where people can come and get advice, practical advice, on saving energy and on dealing with the energy companies. And we've been organizing events where people in these situations can themselves speak out. 
that sometimes outside a target like the Treasury or in Whitehall, and sometimes it's been what we call a warm-up, which works on the principle that if you can't afford to heat your own home, you have a right to make yourself at home anywhere where it's warm. <laughs> <laughs> now, I have to admit that the pensioners who organized warm-ups at Stratford Mall and at the South Bank were not speaking out about climate change. But in doing this with them, they were speaking about school fuel prices. But in doing this, we had a chance to have those meaningful conversations, not artificial conversations, but the difficult conversations people are talking about, conversations about climate with people who at first were very skeptical. Because when we first went to speak to the Greater London Pensioners Association in 2012, everybody was saying climate change is just a government con to put our prices up, and they were not interested in it. And by last year, 2013, they were inviting us to their annual general meeting, passed a fantastic resolution about climate change and renewable energy, which I have here if anybody's interested <coughs> in it. I'm putting it in their magazine. And this was not, you know, this was something that came out of the way that we were connecting integrally with what they were doing. Now, on Monday week, 12th of May, British Gas are holding their annual general meeting. Yes, yeah, I believe this. And a lot of angry pensioners and angry other people, energy consumers, are going to be there. And I hope you'll join us. It's 1 o'clock in Westminster. And one of the things that we're going to be launching is our Energy Bill of Rights. Just as an example of how we're linking poverty issues and climate, the first right is we all have a right to affordable energy to meet our basic needs. Everyone should be able to cook and keep warm. The second right is we all have a right to energy that does not harm us, the, movement, the environment, or the climate. Put those two together. And the third right is, which relates to both of those, is the right to a democratically run energy system to benefit the community, not for profit. So those are some examples of how real poverty action is working to broaden out who we are and who we're reaching. The choice of issue and target, the kind of actions like warm-up, which are confrontational but not overly arrestable <laughs> and not overly physically demanding for people who can <coughs> climb scaffolding. <laughs> the creation of platforms, both in the media and in the street, for people to be heard who don't normally get heard. And what I don't have time to talk about, a self-help movement of people who are up against the companies, the energy companies, and want to be up against them collectively, not individually. And finally, the way that economic issues and climate issues are connected, drawing that out. I just want to go quickly back to the issue of despair, of blocking out the truth, how it's really hard for people to look climate in the face, because it's not as decisive as it sounds. The fact that it's hard for us to face the truth doesn't mean that we don't know that truth. The way our minds work, it's perfectly possible to know two opposite things at the same time. <coughs> After all, that's how the Tories get elected. <laughs> There's a part of your mind where hard truths get stored when you can't do anything about it. That knowledge is not lost, but you need a real shift in power to let it out of that stored part of the brain into the active part of the brain. If we really want to build the movement, it's actually important to respect that process, to know that people who won't look climate change in the face are not fools. They're being pragmatic. And they can tap into that knowledge that is there quite quickly. It can happen very suddenly. It can happen overnight if there's a shift in power. And that's what we're about, right? Yeah. So, please do What's this four things? Come and speak out at the British Gas AGM. In fact, one voice we're missing is students who are often in fuel poverty. 
There may be some of you here who'd like to come and speak out about that. Please sign up. I've got a sign-up sheet here and there's one in the middle room to keep in touch with Fuel Poverty Action and what we're doing. Please come to our workshop at 6 p.m. And please also come to the Reclaim the Tower camp, which is this summer, as organized against fracking, and I'm sure George is going to tell you more about it. And we really need you there 